All right, so I'm just going to give out eight ways to trick your brain into studying better. So this is going to be based on eight cognitive functions based on the framework of our personalities, according to Carl Jung. Um, now, if you don't know anything about the cognitive functions or who the heck Carl Jung is, that's totally fine. Um, the main takeaways are easy to understand, um, even if you have no idea, you know, what some of these functions mean or what the abbreviations are. Um, I'm just going to use them as like a reference point so that for those who do know what they mean, um, it'll make sense and actually be kind of fun to, you know, make the connections. So anyway, um, so getting your brain to study well and retaining more information, being better at applying knowledge and stuff, um, really all comes down to asking yourself four main things when you are presented with information. So when you're presented with information, um, basically ask yourself, what do I know about this information? So the what, and the what could be, what does this mean? What does this information mean? You know, what could be um, the implications of the information? and um, why that information says what it says, and um, how you can deal with that information. So, okay, now you got the information, you know the what, the what could be, and um, why it is what it is. Now, um, how can you address it, uh, what to do from there? So yeah, the what, the what could be, the why, and the how. Okay, so. Now, breaking it down using uh, what Jung calls extrovert sensing and introvert sensing. So engaging your brain in extrovert sensing will get you to expand your knowledge of what you know. And that, of course, requires reading more sources, um, doing more practice questions, reading more um, papers, um, asking people for some more information. Um, but it can also start from uh, going from what you know currently and then expanding it from there. So, for example, if you know that cardiac tamponade, uh, with cardiac tamponade, uh, one of the signs of cardiac tamponade um, includes jugular venous distension. Okay, um, expand your knowledge. Ask yourself, what other conditions have that jugular venous distension? If you know one of the symptoms of heart failure is um, crackles in the lung. Well, okay, what other conditions have crackles in the lung? Go out and expand that knowledge about, you know, starting from a fact that you know and expanding your knowledge from there. And introvert sensing, engaging your brain in introvert sensing um, is kind of similar, except it takes um, the opposite approach. Um, it's about organizing what you know. Okay, so like, for example, if you know um, heart failure, um, you can present with uh, crackles in the lungs, um, you can present with jugular venous distension, you can have ascites and edema. Okay, so with all those facts, now you, get, you can organize it. Which of these symptoms um, can be organized under right-sided heart failure, and which of these symptoms are organized um, under left-sided heart failure? It's about organizing the facts that you already know. Now, another way to get your brain to study better is by asking yourself what could be, you know, what does this mean? What does this information mean? Not just what it is, but what does it mean? Um, so the cognitive functions for these exercises include extrovert intuition and introvert intuition. So similar to how the sensing functions work, um, extrovert intuition is about expanding um, your predictions on, you know, what could be. So if you have a presentation of a patient that has, you know, this, this, and that going on, okay, um, those symptoms, uh, what, do, what do they all mean? What could they, you know, what's the possible diagnosis for this patient? Oh, well, you know, based on this symptom, um, it could possibly be this diagnosis or this diagnosis or that one, you know, just considering all the possible options based on um, the presentation. And then introvert intuition, it's about narrowing down those predictions. Okay, yeah, these are all the possibilities, but based on, you know, X, Y, and Z um, and whatever factors are playing in here, um, the most likely disease is probably, you know, same thing with like treatments. Okay, you got you going from the using extrovert intuition to consider. Oh, there's this possible treatment, this treatment, this option, this option, and then using introvert intuition to narrow down. And say, okay, what is the best possible option? Okay, so that was for the what could be. Now, getting your brain to ask uh, why the information says what it says. Now, why and how kind of um, tie into the thinking functions. Um, so, in extrovert thinking and introvert thinking. So with extrovert thinking, uh, you start with how you can address, how you can deal with the information at hand. Now that you narrowed it down to this diagnosis, what can you do from there? What treatments can you consider? And then so introvert thinking, it's understanding why, um, 
why you should why you should um, address certain things the way that uh, you should, and also why things are presenting the way they are. So for example, why does this patient have crackles in the lungs? If you know the pathophysiology of heart failure, basically the heart gives out and can't pump enough blood and the blood, and the blood backs up and uh, leaks into the lungs, um, and that's what can lead to the crackles in the lungs. Um, knowing the pathophysiology behind what's going on so that you understand, you know, what's going on um, and then you, and so that you can use extrovert thinking to address it from there. And finally, to close up, um, there were two more functions. Uh, there, are, there are eight total functions and we talked about six and how you can link those into helping yourself study better. There are two more, um, the feeling functions. So how can you use feeling to help yourself study better? Well, there's extrovert feeling and introvert feeling. Um, extrovert feeling, think about how you can make other people happy once you get yourself to study better. Motivate yourself with the idea that you can make a lot of people happy when you do this. It's like external motivation. And then introvert feeling, um, that's intrinsic, more intrinsic motivation. Think about what you love about the subject you're studying. Think about how studying the thing that you're studying can help you achieve what you truly love deep down, um, self-motivation in that way. All right, so I hope that was all helpful. Please give this video a like and subscribe. And yeah, hopefully you can apply this in your own study routine, whether it's studying medicine or any subject.